Now, winning the lottery didn't just mean producing a good family film with a good cast and having a big premiere. Several things also fell into place in the music department. This included finding a singer-songwriter to not only provide a few songs to the soundtrack, but also appear in the film, performing on stage during a very special scene. You know, the music uh, is so important. Ben Feingold, the producer of the film, you know, he's very wise about music. And, you know, he worked at uh, Sony for a long time, and so he's always been very involved in music. And, uh, you know, he realizes that great music can make a film better and better and better. So we spent four months searching for Oklahoma artists and Texas artists, and, you know, we just found some really great songs to put in the movie. And we also knew that we were going to have a honky-tonk scene and that we wanted, you know, a female singer in that scene. So, you know, we found Amber Hayes. She's in Nashville, and uh, it just worked out for her to come and appear in the movie and sing her song. Hayes went on to offer three songs to the soundtrack. That includes the song you just heard, Right as Rain, as well as the song at the beginning of the podcast entitled Come On. I spoke to Amber on the phone about this great opportunity to have her music featured in the film. Well, I heard about it. Um, uh, Stephen Goldman uh, directed my uh, video for my last single, Wait, and um, he passed on my stuff to um, the director of the movie and the producer, and um, they called me and asked me to come out, and um, they wanted to meet me, and they did enjoy the music, and they wanted the music to be a part of it, and so they heard Come On and Ride Is Rain, two of the, the songs in the movie are in my EP, and so they thought that they went well with the movie and asked me to be a part of it, and I'm just so glad I was able to do it. It was so special and um, such a blessing, and you know, everyone involved has been just so nice and um, really exciting. You know, not very many people get to have that much involvement as far as, you know, as an artist goes. Um, to be a part of something like this, a movie, and then also have your songs in the movie and be in the movie and all that. And so, um, you know, and it being filmed in Oklahoma and uh, based in Oklahoma, that's where I'm from, and I could really relate to that. And so really, really meant a lot that they asked me to be so involved, and uh, it's an honor to get to work with them. Now, when you see the movie, you'll watch Amber perform the third song she has in it. It was a song that had to be specifically tailored to the scene, and director Timothy Armstrong wanted the message in it to be very specific. You know, we, we have a scene in the Honky Tonk where our little girl is missing her father, and so we needed to create a father-daughter song, and we couldn't find any out there. So I jotted down on paper an idea for the song, the title of the song. It's called uh, Always There For Me. And, you know, some of the lyrics, and I sent it off to Amber, and she and Richie McDonald, you know, took my ideas and made them into a really nice song. I love that scene in the movie um, because I think that is a critical point where she's realizing, um, you know, what's going on with uh, her father and all these fathers and daughters around her. And um, so, you know, I just kind of took that idea um, about a strong relationship with um, a father-daughter and um, sent the idea and their their thoughts on it. And so um, I got with a co-writer buddy of mine, Bill B. Luigi, and um, we just kind of went from there, and um, you know, then was able to get Richie McDonald to come in and uh, do the father part on uh, that song, and it just, um, I think, turned out really great. 
It's evident what the people involved in the movie thought about it. You heard them talk about how much they love the family-oriented nature of the film, the special messages for young girls, or even people who want to pursue their dreams, the great music in the soundtrack, and uh, everything in between. But what about the audience? Well, this audience member liked the movie a lot. It doesn't pretend to be anything it's not. It's a very optimistic, emotional, enjoyable, simple family film. And you know, as Hollywood struggles often to figure out what people want to see in theaters, perhaps Cowgirls and Angels can offer a few examples. There's still very much an audience for a family movie that you can take your kids to and enjoy your time at the theater. It may not always be popular in our culture today to have the story feature things like happy endings or things turning out for the best, and as a result, Hollywood might have forgotten why people, why families, want to escape to the movies. There was a lot to like about Cowgirls and Angels. I'm not even a big country music fan, but I cannot help but tap my toes to Amber Hayes' Come On, and I, I don't even know how that happens. It's obviously all part of the good feeling this movie left audiences when all was said and done. Hey, hey, I'm looking at you, boy, I gotta tell you I'm liking the view. Scarf off those shiny boots, come on. I loved it. It was a great story, and um, it had a real message to it, and I really enjoyed it. Find strength in yourself, and you have to love yourself first. I just thought it was delightful. The acting was good, the scenery was good, and the story, you know, really had a very good storyline, and I thought it was presented well, entertaining and uplifting. Yeah, I thought it was very enjoyable. I thought that uh, the acting and the production values were really good. And it was one of those ended up a happy note, and, and I, I like it. It wasn't a cliche of just happy ending, but it was very pleasant. I really enjoyed it. It was heartwarming, and it was also a good lesson about love and closeness and also the way that blood relatives are so significant to us. Well, I think it was very well cast, which helped make the movie so spectacular. I think it's one of the age-old stories of that parent-child relationship, no matter what. And I think it was very, very, very well done, and I think it's going to do very well at the box office. She cried the whole time. Oh, well, there's nothing wrong with that. That's what it's supposed to do. <laughs> I'm teasing. No, it, was very, it was very finished, complete, very polished. The casting really put the whole thing at the top of the heap. All right, so what did you think? Oh, I thought it was excellent. Everybody, it was a really good family-friendly movie for all of us. I cried. Um, I really liked it. It definitely does appeal to, like, the parents and the younger kids. They can definitely go and see it. I thought it was really good. I also cried like my mom. <laughs> I like horses too, so I thought it was a really good family-friendly movie. It was, it was good. Um, I thought it was excellent. I thought the acting was wonderful. And it, like they said, it appeals to all different ranges of audience. And um, it was a really wonderful film, and I think a lot of people should go see it. I thought it was really good. Okay. Okay. So did you like the, the main character? Yeah, I liked Billy, and then I liked Candace, because she's always looking out for, you know, Billy. And what did you think? I thought it was fantastic fun. I thought that it's great. It's a little piece of Americana on the big screen. It's fun to see, you know, a little bit of that Western rodeo to come back. And I think it's fantastic for girls to be able to go out and see that and know that they can, whatever they have a passion for, that they can do if they truly put their heart into it. It was a great movie. I mean, all the actors were really into it, and it was family fun, and I'd see it again. I'm recommending it. I thought it was amazing acting. Bailey was phenomenal as a young actress, and I would recommend it to anyone, students and adults alike. Cowgirls and Angels, starring Bailey Madison, Alicia Witt, Jackson Rathbone, and James Cromwell, hits select theaters and video on demand on May 25th. You can find the movie and get all of the latest news at cowgirls-n, just the letter N, another dash, angels.com. That's cowgirlsnangels.com. You can find out more about Bailey Madison at baileymadison.com. That's B A I. L-E-E, -E, and then a dash, Madison.com. 
Find out more about Alicia Witt, not only on her acting, but her singing at AliciaWittMusic.com. Jackson Rathbone is also an actor and musician. Check out all of his work at Jackson-Rathbone.com. And you can get more music from Amber Hayes at AmberHayesMusic.com, all one word. You can also find more about the work of writer-director Timothy Armstrong at TimothyArmstrong.net. Finally, if you weren't able to make it to the Dallas International Film Festival, be sure to check out everything that happened there this year at DallasFilm.org and then make plans to go next year. I want to thank everyone who made this edition of Critic Show Extra possible. Thanks for listening and be sure to check out more podcasts on thecriticshow.com. Critic Show.